Yabba dabba do, let's get this show started. Now, today's idea for a video came from a Redditor, someone who's on my Reddit page, r Zach Tellender. If you guys aren't there, go there. And if you have cool ideas, put them in there. There's a little section that you can click and maybe I'll do it if it's a good enough idea. So today we're gonna talk about old timey weightlifting. We're gonna look at a few clips, but before we get to that, I wanna talk about some of the differences. I think some people just see weightlifting for what it is now and they just think, oh, it's, it's always been like that. Few huge differences. The clean and press is no longer in our sport. And that was it, was, it was the triathlon, it was the snatch, clean and press, and the clean and jerk. Before that, I think up until the 20s, maybe a little bit later, there was the, like the single arm lift, there was like the single arm snatch. And there's some really cool old school uh, videos of that. And then, man, some of these Olympiads, there were like nine or 10 different weightlifting events and I think they were taking place uh, in the field section of the track and field. But the clean and press was abolished in 1972. But before that, there was no contact allowed with the bar and the body. So when we called things, when we call it the clean, it was because it was moved cleanly from the floor uh, to the front rack position, above the clavicle, resting on the delts. Once contact was allowed, it was only allowed as a bump or sorry, not a bump, it was allowed as a brush, which is really, come here, Goku. This is, this is, this is Kakarot. I would have been badass if I named him Kakarot instead of Goku, but. Okay, you gotta go. Up until 1964, you were not supposed to touch the bar to the legs or the hips. Few lifts were turned down only if the shins were touched. Then from 1965 to 1968, one could brush the thighs, but not bang or bounce them. Um, so there was a lot of room for arguments similar to the press out rule. Then from 1969 on full contact is allowed uh, as long as it was not a pause uh, as in the continental. So if you see the, the, you know, the continental clean done in strongman with usually like an axle bar, it stops like at the belly and then they get it to the front rack. That is not allowed in weightlifting. A couple things there. There was like a, a camp of people who were like, it's too brutish. It's too ugly. It's, it's not good for our sport to be making contact with the bar. It's supposed to be clean. It's supposed to be done cleanly. And obviously now it's like, that is the standard. You must make contact in order to clean the most amount you can or snatch the most amount you can. There's a couple other things that were different back then. Split snatching and split cleaning. Now, obviously we have the split jerk, but split snatching was another way of getting under. I don't even know at that time in 1960, uh, there were a bunch of squat snatchers. I think earlier on though, it was all split snatch, all split clean. Uh, and a really interesting article came out. Again, there were two camps. One of them was like, the split snatch is always going to be better than the squat jerk. And here's why. And it was basically, yeah, it was just it was just a formal argument as to why the split snatch was better. Obviously, that's not true anymore. The squatting variants of the snatch and the clean are the best. So it's really interesting things. This sport can evolve. And when I look at the, the press out rule and what it's become, it's become something that it, it wasn't supposed to be. I think we can evolve again, but that's not what this is about. I've already talked about that. This is about old school weightlifting. So let's get into that first video. Just the way that weightlifting was present, presented back then, it was much more of a show. It was still part of that like kind of strongman thing, even though this is the 1960s Olympiad. Things were different then, but you could tell they were kind of changing and becoming more about high performance. So here's clean and press. And you can see, you know, you can see how just judgment on that is, is going to start getting crazy. And then you'll see guys like uh, Alexeyev, who was the first to press over uh, 500 pounds. And you could see, man, they are heaving and hoeing that just, it, it was just not... Um, a legitimate exercise. It was there's too much judgment. So then they took it out in 1972. 
So that is Yuri Vlasov, one of the most legendary weightlifters. And I always mention of all time, I always say that, but he is a very decorated weightlifter. He passed away, I think, last year and was really, really sad. I also uh, made a video called The White Moment. And that quote, uh, the white moment quote, is probably one of the most motivating things in weightlifting that I've ever heard. So you can see here, no contact in any of these lifts, which is just crazy to think about. Guys, if you're not familiar with weightlifting, like no contact is a huge challenge, okay? Taking that out of it, I mean, God, if, if my best snatch was 143, my best no contact snatch, maybe 110, you're talking a 33 kilo difference? Wild. Okay, so this guy, James Bradford, uh, definitely a legend in weightlifting, definitely an American legend. Diana Ball was synthesized in 1958, and that was a very popular drug, and it, it was all the way up through the 80s to administer. It's an oral drug. It's, you know, it, I don't I don't even think it was illegal up until, I don't, I don't know when it became illegal, but there's a lot of stories of coaches of American football teams, whether it's college, I think UCLA is, is one of them, uh, college or professional American football teams administering this drug to all of their players. And so all of these guys were on drugs. And it's funny, we think about the old school weightlifters as maybe not being on drugs, you know, because the weights they were lifting and it was looked really rugged. They weren't that, you know, it's not that heavy. Like uh, a, a 170 clean and jerk is not very heavy at all. But, you know, the sport was evolving. It was changing. Um, but drug use was rampant because it was legal and there was no testing for it and no one really looked at it with that lens. They just kind of took the little poppers and moved on. But all, all I can say is it just wasn't a thing. So there, there's Vlasov. And what's weird about Vlasov is he's got these, these like darkened shades on. He's got these sunglasses on. This is Norb Shemansky, an American legend, definitely. And he was a split snatcher. I think he split snatched 160 which is wild to think about. Okay, so here we go. We got uh, Yuri Vlasov with 202.5. Now we're getting into the 200s. No in contact cleans. Guys, that's, that's crazy. Just, you could tell his technique is just fantastic. You know, he would go on to coach the most successful Russian teams. Um, and that looked like it was the winning jerk right there. Okay, Paul Anderson in 1955. So I don't know, you know, I always think about like the Diana Ball, you know, I always think about that as kind of the staple of like, okay, well now you know these guys are taking drugs, right? Before that, how, what were they using and how, you know, it obviously wasn't a bad thing, but like how, how much was it like a thing that everyone did? You know, or was it just kind of like some random guys did it? You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I always think of Diana Ball. This is 1955. This was before Diana Ball was synthesized, I believe. Um, Paul Anderson, 1955. You know what's f***ing crazy? My dad or my grandpa used to talk about Paul Anderson. God, that is crazy to think about. He, My grandpa loved guys like Paul Anderson and uh, Alexeyev. He just thought, you know, it was it was like... They were known names because they were strong, not because they were good weightlifters. It was just like, these guys are so goddamn strong. And I don't know. I don't know if that's what we should get back to, but it's very interesting to think about. I mean, look at this crowd. Everyone's going to see Paul Anderson. Oh, there's Tommy Kono. Okay. So, oh my God, they filled up a f arena. There is no sound on this, too. Black and white. Dude, this is sick. Guarantee you he split snatches. Yep. Guy must be a Soviet. Here we go. Paul Anderson, I think the first person to press 400 pounds. Oh, okay. He's going again. Crazy stance. He's got wide feet. There we go. It finds the groove. See, oh, look at all the people clapping. Another thing too, guys, they they brought the weight all the way down to the floor, which is crazy. 
a lot of times people, it, this, this is something I've seen, you know, on different platforms, people just do not understand dropping weights. And that makes sense. It's not part of your sport. You just, you are in the gym. That's, that's, you perceive weights as like, kind of like delicate things that you use to build muscle that like, that makes sense. We, we perceive weight as like part of our sport and dropping it is like what you must do. You have to drop a clean and jerk. You have to drop a snatch. If you don't, you can risk injury, right? It makes sense taking something and just like guiding it on the way down and just opening your hand and just putting it on the ground that way or trying to hold it and have you have it yank you down. So these guys, they, they had metallic weights. These were not rubberized and they brought them back down to the floor, which is unreal. Okay, uh, this is Tommy Kono. Quick little thing about Tommy Kono. This is the most legendary American weightlifter of all time. In fact, when he died, uh, I think it was like a few months ago, when he died, Google on their front page did like a Tommy Kono tribute. It was like, it was crazy. It was mind blowing to me that, that, you know, he was that much uh, of a hero in American sports. You know, um, the coolest thing about Tommy Kono, obviously, other than being just like a multiple Olympic champion, world champion, was that he like was really into aesthetics and he was really into bodybuilding and he just was like a cool guy. You know, he kind of had that persona of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was like weightlifting was like it was not this refined, hardened thing for him. He was just kind of had this just badass aura to him. And when he passed away, man, that was a legend. When we're talking about, we, we, we just talked about Yuri Vlasov, Norb Shemansky, uh, Paul Anderson. And now we're talking about Tommy Kono. I mean, this stuff is really cool guys. Uh, and you know, maybe now when you see guys like Klokov and you see guys like, you know, Ilya and Lu Zhaojun, it's hard to look at stuff like this and really grasp how and cool it is but to me i just i think it's amazing but this looks like it's going to be a clean and jerk maybe Ooh, power clean so he's going to press it yep here's the russian with the snatch oh my man got low power clean gonna press See, brings it back to the front rack and then back down to the floor. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and definitely go down that rabbit hole watching old school weightlifting. I think it's badass. You'll probably think it's badass. Uh, usually my comment section knows more than I do about a lot of stuff in weightlifting. So if you have some knowledge about the drug use in this era uh, or anything like that, comment below because I, I will see it and I'm just genuinely curious. Anyways, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.